Are you looking for your new favorite easy pasta dish? Well, you've come to the right place because today I'm making a quick ragu with fennel that you're really gonna love. And I think it's really, really delicious. And we're utilizing a technique that I've never shown before where the meat, which is a ground beef, is simmered in water instead of brown and it comes out really tender and succulent and delicious and it doesn't take very long. So follow along to find out how. I'm chopping two cloves of garlic. I'm, I'm gonna need about a tablespoon of minced garlic. I was recently out on the road doing some demos and I took poles because I wanted to know, and I've asked you guys this before, but I've wanted to know how many people actually chop garlic when I say chop garlic and how many people use the bottle. It was about 50-50, <laughs> which I thought was pretty good. I don't know, chopped garlic, it's just so much better. Fresh garlic, so much more delicious. But I understand, it takes a long time. One of the great flavoring components in this is fennel. This is a bulb of fresh fennel, and I'm using just the bulb and about a cup of chopped fennel. But if you like, and we do call for this in the recipe, you can reserve some of the fronds for garnish. It makes it more beautiful and adds just a little bit of freshness at the end. Generally speaking, for this recipe, you're not gonna use the entire bulb of fennel because it only calls for a cup. Depends on the size of your fennel bulb and what kind of condition it's in and how much you need to remove from the outside. This one's actually looking not too bad. I'm gonna just cut it up. I do it sort of like an onion. So I cut down and through and then across to get a nice fine mince. I don't know if you've ever had fennel before or used it in this way, but it adds a sort of subtle sweetness, a little bit anisey, but when it cooks it down, it really adds something nice. So I have a pan heating. This is a large straight-sided skillet. Add a couple tablespoons of olive oil, and you're gonna saute the onion, garlic, and fennel together. This is a cup of minced onion, finely chopped. The fennel can go in as well as the garlic. Start your flavor building early. Add some salt and a little pepper. And then you wanna saute this just until it's a translucent and the, a little bit of the moisture from the onion and the fennel has cooked out. A couple minutes is all that takes. Okay, these look cooked down. You should get them just start getting golden, but I'm getting impatient. <laughs> so I'm gonna add my tomato paste. It's two tablespoons of tomato paste. Give that a little fry up, a little fry up, I don't mean anything. And then what you're gonna do is add your beef. This is a pound of ground beef, and you can break it up just a little bit with the back of the spoon, but you're not gonna brown it, which is the unusual technique I was talking about. You just break it up a little bit, and you're gonna cook it in two cups of water. What this does is speeds up the cooking process, Normally, like a beef ragu will take maybe hours to make. Maybe not, but oftentimes recipes call to cook them for a very long time. Simmering the beef in water like this before you add your tomato makes it nice and tender and juicy. And it does get some caramelization at the end as it's cooking in the tomato, but first you start off by just simmering this in the water for about 10 minutes. So after about 10, 15 minutes, you'll uncover this and add one can of whole peeled tomatoes in juice pureed. I, I prefer to puree my own. I like the flavor of the whole tomatoes pureed as opposed to pureed tomatoes. I know it's crazy, but I'm crazy like that. Cook this a little more, but uncovered until it's reduced and thickened. That'll take about I don't know, another 15 minutes or so. And in the meantime, you can cook your pasta. You wanna cook your pasta in salted water, so add a bunch of salt. I usually add like at least two tablespoons of kosher salt. And then this is pappardelle. This one's an egg pasta, and it only takes about four minutes to cook. So you don't wanna start cooking it until you're pretty close to serving your dinner but obviously every pasta takes a different amount of time to cook, so look at the package to see what it says. And if your pasta's cooked just slightly before your sauce is done, don't worry about it, because it's gonna cook together in the sauce, so you can drain it, and even if it sticks together a little bit, once you add it to your sauce, that's not gonna be a problem anymore. 
So after 10 to 15 minutes, you can see it's really reduced. And there's a little bit of caramelization happening after the fact as opposed to before the fact, which is nice. So you get a good, rich flavor. Pasta is done, so save some pasta water. And I'm going to just go ahead and lift the pasta out of my pasta pot directly into my pan. You want to slightly undercook pasta when you're utilizing this technique because you're going to finish cooking it in the sauce. So if, if the package says four minutes, cook it for three minutes. If the package says seven minutes, cook it for six, whatever. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying. Because what's happening here is you want to incorporate the flavors of the sauce directly into the pasta by tossing it together and cooking it together. And you can add a little bit of pasta water. Start with about a quarter of a cup. Pasta water has seasoning in it, it has salt. It also has a little bit of starch, which helps make the sauce a little bit silkier and gives it a nicer texture. Give this a little toss, stir it around, make sure that your pan is big enough. If your pan isn't big enough to do this, drain your pasta and then do this in the pasta pot. As you can see, my pan is just barely big enough to do it and I am going with it. You can drizzle in another couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Finishing with a little bit of fresh oil or butter really enriches the sauce and also helps thicken it and adds a delicious fresh flavor. Fresh olive oil at the end is like a completely different flavor than adding olive oil to cook in at the beginning. You turn your heat off and you can serve yourself because dinner is ready. You want to grate some cheese on top. Of course you do. How about a little bit of hot pepper flakes and some of those fennel fronds. There you go, look at that. And this takes like 30 minutes start to finish. You are going to adore it. Now I'm gonna to try to eat some without getting it on my shirt. Will I be successful? Nobody knows. It's really, really good, give it a try.